I'm Ken Green. I run the Hudson Valley Seed Library. And then, um, so when you're talking at the beginning about what makes us human and that sort of abstract question, uh, it, one of the things that I've come to believe over the last 10 years of saving seeds is that one of the things that makes us human culturally is saving seeds. And that without the first humans who started saving seeds 10 or 12,000 years ago, um, and which led to our ability to have uh, dependable agriculture systems, uh, our culture would not develop the way that it's developed. Um, and so one of my passions and, and what I like to do with the Hudson Valley Seed Library is really introduce all people to seed saving, whether or not that's going to be something that you're going to do if you become a farmer or a gardener or not, so that people can engage in and connect to this practice that's been going on for generations and generations and generations and really understand our ancestors and our agricultural history. Uh, the other part that's interesting for me about being a farmer now is that I didn't come from an agricultural background. I didn't grow up farming. Uh, I came to uh, my interest in seeds and my interest in farming from a very cultural perspective. When you think about that word agriculture, there's a, there's a science part of that, uh, and a plant part of that, and a botanical part of that, but there's also the word culture in it. And you can't really separate out culture from agriculture. Food is cultural, and growing food is cultural. And so my background is that uh, I've been a teacher, I've been an acrobat, artists have been all kinds of different things in my life. And the last real sort of job that I had where I would show up to work and I would actually get paid for showing up to work uh, was at a small town library in Gardner, New York, which is just a little bit of south of New Paltz. And while I was at the library and kind of falling in love with the library system as this radically democratic institution that's kind of amazing that we still have public libraries. Um, there are places that are accessible to everybody in the community, no matter who you are, how much money you have or don't have, what you look like, what your political affiliations are. It doesn't matter. Everything in the library uh, is equally accessible to all people, which is pretty radical, uh, considering the way that our culture seems to be headed. Um, so I was falling in love with that whole system, and at the same time, I was learning about some of these big issues that you probably have um, heard about in different ways, uh, loss of genetic diversity, that all of these different varieties of plants are disappearing on the planet. Everything from, you know, Uncle Joe's heirloom tomato that has been in his family for four generations or ten generations, um, to varieties of rice one of the um, world's most important staple food crops. In the 50s, there were about 20,000 varieties of rice in India, uh, and they're estimating that there's about 50 varieties of rice. <coughs> when you're looking at that kind of loss of genetic diversity um, and that loss of, of, of genetic resources, we never know which of those varieties might actually be really important going forward um, that has a resistance to a certain new disease that's popped up, or a certain new pest that we have, or that is going to produce well, perform well after climate changes. So, you know, that was one of the issues I was learning about, loss of genetic diversity. The other thing I was learning about is consolidation of seed resources. And this is something we're seeing in industries all over, that as um, different industries are being privatized more, and corporations are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, they are owning more and more of the resources of that particular industry. And the seeds, the number one uh, controller of seeds on the planet is Monsanto. And Monsanto is a chemical corporation. So I was looking at those two big issues like, okay, like that's way over like my head. Like what can I do when I'm thinking about these big global issues to that would make a difference. I'm just one person with those art. But it was one of those moments, and it's sort of interesting thinking about what your job is, and that students can come to you with an idea and sort of say, I want to make a difference. I think, how can we make this happen? So for me, it started with, well, 
I can save seeds in my own garden. As soon as I'm saving my own seeds, I remove myself from this entire system. I'm not sending my seed dollars to some seed company that's buying seeds from this place, buying seeds from that place, potentially can trace my seed dollars back to Monsanto. I don't want Monsanto to have my money, even a little bit of my money. Uh, and I can look for varieties that maybe haven't been commercialized, grow those in my gardens, and I can help with preserving the genetic diversity that we have left. So that's where I started, was just like, I want to make some kind of difference with these issues. So I started learning how to save seeds, uh, and then it just didn't feel like I was doing enough uh, to address these issues. And so back to the library, I was thinking about how cool libraries are, and how they share ideas and information, and keep those uh, ideas, uh, imagination, and stories alive through sharing books. And I thought, well, why not add seeds to the library catalog? And then people can come into our library, they can check out seeds, just like the book. Uh, and they're checking out kind of two different kinds of stories. They're checking out the genetic story. When you plant that seed and it starts to grow, it's telling you a story of 10,000 years of cultivation through its genetic expression. But you're also planting the cultural stories that come with those seeds, whether that's a very individual personal story, or that's a story of a people, or a village, or a culture, or a certain place on the planet. Uh, so people could come to our library, check out seeds, bring them home, and then what I wanted was for people to you know, eat a little bit, or cut flowers, or enjoy them, but save some seeds to bring back to the library at the end of the season, because of course, part of what makes the library work is that reciprocity that people bring back what they check out so that they can share it. So after about four years of doing that, and that was the first seed library in the public library in the country, that was 10 years ago. Um, today, there's over 300 seed libraries in different types of community seed saving organizations all over our country. Uh, there's a lot of interest in seed right now, um, and a lot of creative ways of going about saving and sharing seeds. Uh, seeds took over my life, I turned into a total seed nerd, I quit my job, uh, I started a seed farm, I turned uh, some of seed library into a seed company so that I could devote myself full time to what I was doing and hopefully make a living doing that. And uh, I won't get into that part too much, but if you do have questions about what it's like to make a living as a farmer, I'm happy to answer questions about that. Uh, so we have a full seed catalog now that anyone can buy seeds from. And we have an online seed library for people who still want to participate in the library program. I can reach a lot more people that way. Um, so I'll, probably, I'll stop there.